Hey, my name is Ron Alexander. I'm the director of the Canner Field Museum. Uh, the Canner Field Museum basically is a uh, recreation of the original airport. The original Atlanta airport started as a racetrack being, that was developed by Mr. Asa Candler, the founder of the Coca-Cola Company. He was a race car enthusiast and in 1909 he built a racetrack and that racetrack failed basically and slowly evolved into an airport. And the location is exactly where the Delta Airlines headquarters is located today. So in 1926 the city of Atlanta actually bought that particular land established the first Atlanta airport and they called it Canner Field. And it was named Canner Field from 1926 until 1946 when it was then changed to the Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta airport. So we are in the process of recreating that airport as it existed in the late 1920s and the early 1930s. And so this year with the Georgia Tech program, uh, we've been very fortunate in the fact that we have three young people who are doing an excellent job. We have been training them in the maintenance aspects of rest restoring antique airplanes, basically, teaching them certain skills that are involved with doing that, and uh, once again, enabling them to make a decision as to whether or not this is something that they would like to do in the future. And, you know, this not only relates to being a pilot or to a mechanic, but it can also relate to being an air traffic controller, or an aeronautical engineer, uh, an airport manager, any number of aspects, but it gives them a taste and an initial experience about aviation in general. Uh, we are very appreciative of the opportunity that we've been given by Georgia Tech, and we hope that we can uh, continue the relationship and further develop it. We're working with the school systems uh, here in Spalding County, Pike County, Fayette County, actually, uh, to develop programs to that are actually apprentice programs, work-based learning programs, and so forth. So. Uh, what we're doing this summer with Georgia Tech fits in uh, very, very well with our overall mission and goals. My name is Dr. Ayanna Howard. I am a professor in the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Uh, my lab is doing research in robotics, primarily in field robotics and in robotics for uh, children with disabilities to give them therapy and education. I'm Carrie Beth Frankowski. I teach sixth grade earth science at Vickery Creek Middle School. I'm part of the PRIME program, which focuses on incorporating arts and engineering. The robot project is inspired by a real robot called the Ice Fin that was developed at Georgia Tech. Um, and in Dr. Howard's lab, a student named Anthony Spears helped develop the electronics in that robot. And what happened with the robot is they sent it to Antarctica literally under the ice, drilled a hole for it and then dropped it down in the ice so it could explore places where we've never been before. In a long time, we hope that this type of robot would be able to go to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, which is a lot like Antarctica, covered in an icy shell, frozen or liquid water underneath it, so that we can figure out if there's life underneath the water. So with the student activity, they'll get to explore in the maze that's enclosed so they don't totally know where they are, just like with Antarctica or Europa, where we're looking for something we've never seen before with a robot. So in the project, the kids will have a phone or some sort of camera attached to their robot, and as it goes through the maze, it'll do a live feed of where they're located in the maze, just like with the ice fin robot from Dr. Howard's lab. Um, and so in the maze I've hidden little aliens or animals that the kids are looking for and it's really a game so they'll earn points based on um, how many animals they can find. Just like when the robots went to Antarctica and looked under the ice, they found all sorts of life that they weren't really expecting to find. So I want the kids to know what it feels like to A, not know where you are, but B, what it's like when you discover something that you didn't expect to be there. When the robots are going through the maze, they have a marker attached to the back and it traces the path that the robot goes on as it makes its way through the maze. So when the kids are finished going through the maze, they can look at the piece of paper and see the path that the robot actually took, which is nice because they probably couldn't tell where exactly it was in the enclosed maze to begin with. But when I looked at that piece of paper, it looks to me like continuous line art. And so the art inspiration for me came from Picasso's continuous line drawings. So I wanted the kids to one, learn about those, but two, be able to make their own. 
and not just make their own line drawings, but to turn them into a little wire sculpture. So they've got more of a representation of it that's not just on paper. I am a science person. I love earth science. Um, I don't consider myself artistic, but I enjoy the arts. So with the program, I really like how I can bring the arts to the classroom and the kids get to try out new things um, that aren't normally part of the curriculum. My name is Ryan Adcock and I'm the production control manager at Sumika. Hi, my name is Lewis Pulliam. I work at Spalding County High School and I currently work with the ninth grade math. We are a um, resin compounder. So we take uh, polypropylene resin and then add uh, different uh, additives to it to get particular physical properties. We're in the automotive business. We make pellets for molders who mold bumper covers and interior parts primarily for Hondas, Toyotas, and Nissans. Fortunately, I've been able to go to each department. Today, I'm actually back in the warehouse and in the production area um, learning a lot of their different controls and how they use math and the different numbers for ratios and all that kind of things in the production side. I've been with the quality control side for a little while. I did that for a week. Also did the upfront with the ordering, purchasing and all that stuff uh, the first week. So I've been able to go through each aspect of the company and uh, learn a little bit about how they use math and each job asset. I was able to get a spreadsheet and all that kind of stuff and we're actually, I'm going to be using that in the classroom and um, hopefully show the kids that what we're teaching in math is actually applicable here at the corporate side of stuff. So um, a lot of it was really, I mean, hands-on because what I'm teaching I saw right in person. Mm -hmm. My name is Jennifer Murphy and I'm a sixth grade earth science teacher at Hillsman Middle School in Athens, Georgia. Well, I'm Cordula Schultz. I'm in the Cellular Biology Department at the University of Georgia and I'm doing both. I'm teaching students in lectures and on, in the lab and I'm leading a research laboratory. I've been learning about Drosophila, the fruit fly, <laughs> and I've learned how to uh, sort them, uh, separate them by uh, gender. I've learned how to uh, sort them by uh, mated and non-mated. I've learned how to uh, identify certain types of mutations that are on the fruit fly and I have also learned how to prepare food, how to grow them in a lab and I'm just now starting to work on a genetic cross experiment. Dr. Schultz wanted me to be able to do something uh, that I could use in my lab so she first showed me how to extract DNA uh, chemically using the fruit fly specimens, but then she showed me how I could do a very simple classroom version using household materials using an, an onion, which of course is a much, you know, more accessible specimen to acquire, you know, so basically I could buy things from the grocery store and do this activity with my students. My name is Daryl Colley. I'm an engineering teacher in Gwinnett County Public Schools and I teach at Mountain View High School. Well, Georgia Power and the GIFT program has allowed me to just e expand um, not just who I am as a teacher but more so as, a, as an individual. I'm a curious person. Um, I like to try different things and Georgia Power has given me that opportunity to do that. Uh, with the GIFT program I've learned everything again from safety to uh, professional development to ethics um, and I want to take all that experience back to my kids because at the end of the day my goal is to expose them to more things. Um, I want my kids to also know that I receive training to be a better teacher for them. Um, I don't want them to think well I just take the summer off and kind of stare at a wall but um, I took this unique opportunity to be a better teacher for them and I really want my kids to say you know what if Coach Colley can do it I can too. My gift experience was by far the best professional development I've ever had. I've been a teacher for almost nine years now and it's just something different. I wanted to try something outside the box, make myself a little uncomfortable just to help me grow a little bit as a teacher. Um, the gift experience has allowed me to work with so many different professionals, vice presidents, uh, troublemen. I've been able to go out on maintenance crews. Uh, I've actually been able to sit in the classroom and be a student for once and kind of learn uh, professional development from uh, industry professionals, from engineers as well as uh, your secretary from anyone inside of Georgia Power and it's been really really great experience for me. 